my uh, friend Adam Goucher uh, was supposed to do the next talk, and he will do the next talk, but he wasn't able to attend. Um, uh, thanks to uh, last minute, non-life-threatening uh, family health issue. Uh, this is uh, something of a follow-up to my talk, and I will handle the uh, Good afternoon. presentation. Good afternoon. Dave has just been discussing self-replicating circuitry in a particular cellular automaton. Self-replication is interesting because it is a necessary condition for an organism to evolve. Can evolution be observed in a cellular automaton? Although Conway's life is probably the most well-known cellular automaton, especially here, it was predated by a 29-state automaton proposed by John von Neumann in the 1940s to formalize his idea of self-replicating machines. He'd previously proposed a kinematic model with motors and sensors and logic gates and such like, but the cellular automaton is more elegant. Signals pass along the red and blue arrows, and the green diamonds function as AND gates, signal splitters, and wire crossings. It copies and reads a tape. DNA uses BASE-4, and modern computers use BASE-2, but this self-replicator by William R. Buckley and me uses a BASE-3 tape. Arguably, that's optimal because it's the closest integer to E. We managed to optimise the tape down to just 8,920 ternary digits long. Just to reiterate, the tape is read twice, to both copy and execute the instructions. After von Neumann, COD made a simpler cellular automaton, reducing the number of states from 29 down to just 8. Someone called Banks later reduced it to merely 4, but the resulting rule is just too difficult to use. It's like trying to build the Eiffel Tower by launching cannonballs and getting them to collide mid-air so that the resulting hot pieces of shrapnel land in exactly the right places to build it gradually, layer by layer. Anyway, I digress. Let's return to COD's eight-state rule. Forty years later, Tim Hutton finally built a machine proposed by COD in his 1968 paper. Mm. And it's huge. Tim estimates that even in the super-fast program Golly, which has clever algorithms that Tom Rikiki will describe in about four minutes' time, it would take a thousand years for this machine to copy itself. Evolution, of course, would take inconceivably longer still. Chris Langton came to the rescue. If von Neumann's self-replicator is an organism, then Langton produced something more akin to a virus. Both Langton's loops and viruses contain tiny loops of DNA and sheathed in a symmetrical coat and this symmetry allows the descriptive complexity to be so low. And with small modifications, we can see them evolve. The left-hand pane is the nine-state Evo loop, which actually was found to demonstrate richer behaviour than its creators conceived. We'll soon see another example of this rare phenomenon. The right pane has a tenth state to enable genetic transfer between loops. Fundamentally, however, these loops will always remain loops. We won't see multicellular organisms and plants and animals and intelligent life because there's not the same flexibility that there is in von Neumann's cellular automata. What we actually want is open-ended evolution. Tim Hutton decided maybe that instead of a cellular automaton, we should have an artificial chemistry consisting of interacting molecules. The idea is we have a collection of atoms, each with an immutable type, represented here by a colour and a letter, an immutable state, represented by a natural number. They can react according to certain rules, bonding and unbonding in the process. Tim found a set of eight reactions which allow single-stranded DNA to self-replicate indefinitely. It so happens that when two strands are replicating in the same vicinity, that it's possible for them to become entangled and for their progeny to contain the initial segment of one strand and the final segment of the other. This is identical to the biological phenomenon of chiasmata, which gives rise to mutation and evolution. For more realism, however, we want the reactions to not be fixed, but rather to be dynamically catalyzed by other molecules in the vicinity. One way to do this is to have a certain type of atom which catalyzes a reaction, or indeed a family thereof, encoded by its state. We have a property called closure, 
which means that every reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme, including the very reactions necessary to constrict those enzymes themselves. If you've seen M.C. Escher's hands which draw each other, it would be like the hands being able to also draw additional pencils. Here is a long strand of DNA inside a cellular membrane, which encodes self-replication enzymes as sequences of atoms of different types. The simulator is called HEX13, and it runs on a GPU as opposed to a CPU, allowing it to perform over 1 billion atom movements and reactions per second. We've actually gone full circle, because the artificial chemistry is implemented as a cellular automaton. It uses a 13-element partitioning scheme on a hexagonal grid, where each of the cells can be in one of 2 to the 64 different states, incorporating the 52-bit atom state, 6-bit atom type, and 6 bits of information about the nearby bonds. The seemingly random diffusion of atoms is actually deterministic. A pseudo-random hash function of cells in the neighbourhood is computed. The hash is written back into the empty cells, which don't contain any atoms. Essentially, the grid is an immense pseudo-random number generator. Here are a couple of unsolved problems that would be very interesting to solve. If you succeed in doing either of these, please let me know. You can download the simulator for free from the link above. It definitely works on Linux, and Tim Hutton has managed to port it to Windows as well.